Alright, what is up guys? Um, <clears throat> so in this video, um, I am trying to give you guys all the best way to be able to do every day in SVS um, to the maximal capacity you possibly can. I'm playing from a T10 account with a, a lot of stuff maxed. Um, my buildings, as you can see, they, I mean, they're pretty much all done. The only things I really have left are things that require fodder and not really willing to do that while I still have insect stuff to do. But the point of this guide is basically to help everybody uh, essentially be able to go through and maximize out each and every day with every colony action to maximize not only their account but what they're able to do in SVS and be able to do overall not only for their alliance or for the server um as you can see i'll, I'll run through my account first just to kind of show you what i have uh so you can kind of see I, i'm not an overpowered whale or anything like that it's just it's all about playing the smart And I, in this guide, I will go through and I will tell you how to best hit um, in Pangolin, how to best hit in Groundhog, how to best hit uh, in every factor of this game and, and finish your force event and everything else throughout um, the week so that you can essentially complete everything and do the best to your ability with not having to spend a dime essentially so hopefully it will help and uh, we'll see you in the rest of the video oh uh, also forgot to mention everybody knows my name by now uh, my my youtube channel is uh, fear of god or well, x fear of god x yeah anyway um, Many know me in the ant world uh, by Agne. Um, I'm currently running by the name of Enigma. And um, again, I, I hope that every, that this helps everybody. All right, so this is really going to be kind of a grouped video um, because building day and gathering day kind of runs into each other. Um, so we'll call it, you know, building slash pre-gathering day. Um, now, two hours before PvP ends um, or before Groundhog ends, uh, if you are still, you want to start your gathering in uh, Raider or Herder so you get the maximum amount of time. The reason being is because when you come in here and you go to your class features on uh, Herder, <clears throat> As long as you have, oops, no, I'm heard a cultivator. Sorry. As long as you have, um, not that one. It's, uh, Seraphite three, Sapphire. I don't know how to pronounce that. In feeder three, what that gives you is an extra uh, forty-five thousand um, of that resource for points per hour that you gathered. So essentially instead of an 18 hour gathering time on an, a level eight tile, you're pushing it up to a um, 26 hour ga or gathering time. Um, that gives you more points. So what you do is you set out and you can see I, I've actually just set mine out. So they'll run perfectly over into the next, into the gathering day. Um, and so you'll, you'll set them out and then right before you draw them back on gathering day, you'll get the extra points. Now, this also means that you kind of lose out in the last, what, hour, two hours of, uh, PVP day, but it's kind of worth it for the point difference. And now the thing is, is that on, means also that on building day and gathering day, you do not want to do war zone construction at all. And I'll get into the, the gathering, um, like how I go about doing my snakes and all that as well um, when we get into 
the new week with that. Um, now, going into building day, uh, I, I can't really help all much with that because, I mean, the only thing I have less left is my fodderness. Um, but I can tell you that some of the best things to do for points are like your resource nodes and such. Um, those usually, they, they cost less uh, resources and speeds to actually do. And so the accumulation of the points actually gives you a lot more buildings than if you were to do like a depot, which costs you, you know, hundreds of millions of resources. Um, on top of that, usually on building day, you don't want to do more than six to eight shells because eventually you get to the point that like me, you really don't have anything to do. So one of the best things to do on that case is if you do plan on doing any spending or anything like that, um, usually I would suggest on doing it on Sunday so you can at least get a few shells when you get to this point to where you literally have nothing left to do. All right, <clears throat> so gathering day. Um, the best thing, like I said, is when you have your pre-gathering out and they should, if you time it right, it should come back all at the same time. So the biggest key to that is when, when they come back and you'll see, I'm going to fill out all nine shells in one go, um, doing this trick. Now on top of that, what a lot of people don't know is that during the week when you're doing the force of nature thing, um, as long as you know which of these insect remains they are, you can hold on to them. So like this one is herb for the hedgehog. So I can start opening those up and collect them throughout the week to be able to get as many. Oh, it was not the fucking rip. Which one is it? Uh, anyway, uh, I'll figure out which one it was later but anyway you can save whatever bait it is and if you don't know which one it is you can just hit an insect real quick and figure out um which one you're supposed to have for that day now what i do on gathering days is i go ahead and do all of my actual rallies first so that means my lizards my uh, hedgehogs or snakes or whatever the fuck it is I'll do those first, and then I'll make sure I save 10 stamina, so usually it means I can do all but one uh, rally, then I do one insect per march, and then I set, set my troops back out to gather. Now, after I do that, in the morning time, I'll come back on, pop a berry, bring my troops back, go ahead and do all my insects, and then send them back out until the end of the event. That's the best way to be able to uh, go ahead and do the force of nature along with it. Um, and actually, I'm going to do a uh, insect real quick to figure out what bait it is. But I'll go ahead and do all of my lizards and such worm okay so I'll go ahead and go in here I don't have as many worm as I usually do I think that we got those coming out of the island but I just do them by batches of seven and that way I can go ahead and get as many baits as I can. For some reason, doing it by seven seems to work for me the best for getting the most baits. But yeah, basically what I do is the first um, day of the new uh, event, I'll go ahead and open all of mine. And this is what my alliance does too. They'll open up all of theirs and then we'll just play off each other's rallies. For the entire week so that we don't have to open up another one of these baits for the rest of the week and everybody always has enough baits by the end to be able to 
make sure everybody can get their rallies done. All right, guys, so Evo Day. Evo Day is fairly straightforward, but it's also one of the days where you start really um, paying attention to your colony actions and uh, being able to catch up during it. So right now you see we got a perfect colony action. So I'll go ahead and do an Evo or two, probably only one, honestly. Um, You always want to focus on things that are creature main, but you also want to spread out your creature mains throughout uh, the event. Yep, so that's two. So right there, I stop. I will stop until uh, the next colony action, which will be in another, I think it's another, yeah, see. It'll be another uh, hour or so. Um, this is at 8 o'clock my time, so 10 o'clock my time is when I'll do the next one. And th that's, Evo Day and Special Event Day are kind of your cash-up days. Those are the days you can get the most, um, colony actions done to be able to get the most diamonds, which will help you out later on, plus it gives you the most speeds, etc., etc. So those are the days that you really want to, um, make sure that you get them done. Now, on top of that, as far as the force of nature, um, this is also the day that I go ahead and uh, do my wet soil and sand gathering. So I'll go ahead and find a wet soil in the sand that has enough on it. See, there's one, so I'll go ahead and set that one out. And what soil? There you go. So those, by the time that I go ahead and do my insects, since I already did, like I, I had said in, in the last section, um, I already did my lizards and um, my uh, hedgehog rallies or whatever they are right now. I already did those. So in the morning, I'll be able to do my insects. Now I, I am keeping my lowest march down here because it can still do one hedgehog rally before I send it off to do war zone construction. Now I also have um, already switched back over to Raider um, because it's pangolin time and um, because we're done with cultivator as far as what you need to do in this particular guide. Alright, so special ante. Uh, one of the major things um, to do is to make sure that you don't use your hatches. Um, so when special ant day starts, I'll go ahead and I'll do those first, which I, I wait for the colony action, um, which there's one currently active, and I'll go ahead and just do those free hatches uh, first. <clears throat> now, what I usually tell people is uh, I, ha I actually have a separate video that is on my channel, which is just about how to do special on day, but I'll go ahead and show it kind of like here. Um, but usually what I tell people is whatever your spores are, save about 2,000 of them because you'll be able to do this trick to not only get your nine shells, but also push your score up and hit as many colony actions as you, as you can. Um, I'll go ahead and do the trick first instead of going ahead and upgrading my stuff um just so you could see what that is and what i do um, now typically there's a valid argument to be made about saving your stamina for doing um insects and such for the points that really depends on what level you're at because when you get higher up um it, it frankly it's not a much it's not as much of an assistance as uh it is at a lower level when you know you really can't get I many tertiary eggs you can't really do this trick as much um etc cetera, etc cetera. so i go ahead and do all my uh lizard and 
uh, hedgehog rallies and all that, um, which as you can see, with an update on that, almost done with them already, and it's only day three. So if you refer back to the past sections about what I do with that, you'll know that it does work. So I'll go ahead and get into um, what I do for Special Ant Day after I've upgraded my stuff and saved uh, 2,000 ants or 2,000 spores. So I'll go ahead and go into my idle. And what I do is I use one 100,000, upgrade to six. Upgrade to six, upgrade to six, and then I'll go ahead and decompose it. And that gives me 80% of my spores back. Now I'll keep on doing that until I run out of what I've naturally hatched um, over the course of the few days leading up to Special Ant Day, the, the week leading up to Special Ant Day. until our colony action is done. <clears throat> and the reason why you do this is it, it allows for basically maximal points for the spores you have. So if you use 2,000 of them, that basically allows you to hit every colony action along the way. Okay, see, so I finished that colony action, so I stopped there. Now, if I was out of blue ants, I would go over and I would go ahead and start hatching some of my blue ants. What I do there is I'll hatch like three. As soon as I see, you know, two blue ants or a green and a blue ant, I'll go ahead and use that same trick and I'll repeat that process throughout the entire 2000 spores that I have. So that way I can hit anywhere from about 10 to 12 colony actions in a given day. So I can, I can still cash up as much as I can. As you can see, I already cashed up quite a bit on my diamonds during Evo day, but doing this, I'll cash up probably about another hundred thousand uh, diamonds during the EVO day. Alright. <clears throat> so I also forgot to mention that um, redeeming spores, or redeeming uh, shells anyway, um, helps a lot too for getting uh, points and whatnot, but it can also help you with having more spores in general. So usually what I do is I try to save purples or blues for this particular case. Um, right now I just got blues, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just redeem them. A lot of times this will also fill out um, usually almost an entire fucking colony action. If not, usually when you do purples, it will fill it out. But if not, um, I just go to whatever ant I'm working on. Kiwi Honeydew also does the same thing for being able to um, fill out a colony action and to get more points. So I'll go ahead and usually use all my purples to be able to get, like for this, this case, I got to 50. So that'll put me at two shells. So I'll go ahead and do a little bit of work on that uh, ant. So I'll go ahead and uh, use whatever I'm not really using at the moment, which... Uh, I can go ahead and do two of those. There 
and that should finish out the colony action. So that's just a little extra something that you should be aware of to do um, every special land day. <clears throat> okay, so special or uh, soldier hatch day is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the only difference is, and I've already actually done um, the first colony action, as you can see from there. I just want to show it. The only difference is you're actually able to pair them. Um, a lot of the time. So as long as you look at the colony action list, you can see I still got a buff going. Uh, what you usually do is like the last 10 minutes or five minutes of whatever colony action you're pairing, you pop a buff or a uh, raspberry and go ahead and do enough to be able to hit that colony action uh, and then progress along that way. Now, when you hit T10s, it's a bit different. Uh, you have two options when you hit T10s. It's either you still do a double hatch day, which slows down how many T10 you can actually hatch because the timer with everything fucking maxed out is absolutely ridiculous, as you can see. Um, or what you could do is, which is the option I did, is you could still do a dual hatch day, but you're going to basically lose out on approximately 30,000 T10 that you hatch per week uh and I, what i do is i just go ahead and hatch t9s instead for it's about five uh hatches of t10s to be able to max out the uh rest of the um wars on event as well as two hatches of t10 uses up all of my normal hatch speeds and then i go ahead and on the next day I go ahead and use my normals and do the same process. Now the big thing to, to note is do not do mutations. Do not do um, Evo or not the, the, the evolution on uh, these ants because that does not give you anything really for points. It's not worth your time to do it. Now um, also as a quick update you can see in the force of life by this time if you follow what i said you should be completely done with hedgehogs so that's basically the guide for this day um pretty self-explanatory um i'll go ahead and do kind of a short video for the choose your own day just so you can refer back to whatever section for whatever day you choose um but Honestly, doing the double soldier hatch is still the best way to at least get nine shells every single day and not have to be gathering. All right, well, <clears throat> for the choose your own day, it's uh, actually not time yet, but I figured I'd go ahead and make the video now. Um, the easiest choose your own days uh, to do, and really the only two that you should really decide between as far as what to do on your own your choose your own day is either gathering or hatching soldier ants. Hatching soldier ants is the most effective, especially with the lance expedition and island and everything that's going on. Um, that's the easiest way to make sure that you can get all nine shells. Um, if you don't have a 10 to 11 locust, it's kind of hard to get nine shells on the choose your own day doing gathering unless you do not attend the lance expedition, which I don't really suggest they do. Um, one thing that I forgot to touch on uh, in the previous videos is when you switch back over to Raider um, after you did that initial search or switch on Cultivator. You got one of two choices. You can either switch directly after the gathering day using a token so that you're in Raider during the Penguin events, which is what I typically do. If you don't want to choose or if you don't want to buy the token every week uh, from the VIP store uh, on Soldier Hatch Day, is when you go ahead and switch back over to Raider for free. That way, when it comes to uh, gathering day, you're able to uh, switch back over for free again. So it's really up to you. Um, but again, uh, those are my two suggestions for the choose your own day, and hopefully it helps you out. <clears throat> All right, so look, the best thing to do during KE, the most important thing, honestly, is the squirters. If you have people that are in there that 
have way under par marches. Honestly, nothing below 4.5 should be in there. If you have people that have wrong type of marches in there, like the running carriers or fucking shooters, they should also not be in there. Um, that is just giving major points. If you look at this, we're, we're facing a pretty dead server. This dude has 4.6G oh, basically in the last 15 minutes from hitting squirters with people that honestly have no purpose being in the squirters. That's a big problem considering that most players, all those players that were honestly are in the squirters that should be out gathering. They, he just made as much points as each and every one of those players should be able to make in, in an entire event just gathering. The other thing to look out for is when squirters are disabled, it's best to let them take it over and then go back to them after they have kicked everybody out. Um, the reason being is because of the buffs and et cetera, et cetera. But all these people that are sending marches in for honestly no reason that does nothing but hurt the entire event. Alright, <clears throat> I had to do a bit of edit to kind of show um, on my farm because my farm's actually uh, gathering out here in their zone. Um, but for proper etiquette when you're out gathering in the enemy zone is you typically want to place every one of your marches about 50 to 60 feet not only away from you but in different directions so if you look this one's 144 feet away from me this one's 187 feet away from me I have them all spread out way all over the map so that they have they would literally have to port several times or if they port by one and hit one of the others they have a, you know, I have a bit of a warning so I can hop on, pull my, pull my troops back, whatever. You also look in my marches, I'm running low tier troops so that it doesn't really give many points if I happen to not be online um, while I'm gathering. <clears throat> That's another big key as far as gathering. Now, if you're in Cultivator, um, it is still best to run... Um, gather either plant or meat. Uh, if you are in herder or raider when you're in the enemy zone because of the point system it is best to gather sand or wet soil because of the gathering speed. It's because of the attributes of each class that makes which one is better for you to gather in which class you are. But if you are in cultivator you absolutely want to be gathering meat or or plant. All right, so Groundhog Day, it's uh, fairly self-explanatory, but there are uh, best ants to use. Um, for the Groundhog, it really depends whether the Groundhog at that time has defense or doesn't have defense, and because they like to switch stuff around so much, um, I tend to just go ahead and put an ant in that has piercing to be able to um, cut through that defense if, if there does happen to be defense. So typically what I run uh, is Crimson Fragger, Lathy, and um, Reap Master. Now there's obviously other ants that you can use depending on what you spend. Um, we, I will be doing a separate uh, video as far as best tier for PvE, PvP, um, Groundhog, and all of that, um, with, which will be a co uh, collab with uh, Carvar from 350. Uh, we've been working together on it, so uh, we'll do it then. Now, uh, one of the other things, you know, make sure you have a, a, a buff popped. Uh, attack at least. I always just go ahead and do defense as well because why not? I mean, it doesn't help any, but might as well. If you pop one, might as well pop the other. Um, and then, of course, your raspberry. The event hasn't actually started yet, as you can see, but um, that's personally what I run for carriers. Uh, it'd be something like Crimson Fragger. Um, Golden Crystal and Shikri would be a good uh, lineup. 
Uh, for Guardians, Guardians honestly are never going to do very good. But um, you have some options there. Mostly the pay to win ants because it's gonna, what's going to give you the best uh, chance for that. Uh, and as far as insects, uh, the uh, Groundhog Day is the only day that I do insects because you're able to get more points basically in pvp uh day it's pretty easy to get points whether you're gathering or whatnot to easily get your nine shells and same with groundhog day but on groundhog day it's a little bit harder to be able to push to be able to get those points so i always save my insects until uh groundhog day and i always wait for the colony action to do those uh so that pretty much concludes this guide uh i hope it helped uh, quick update with the remains. I'll do my 20 insects in the morning when I get my stamina back. But you can see that you always end up with 120 of those. And uh, once again, I hope that this helped. And keep an eye out for the next video that we do that will be going over best ants and lineups and tier list for that. Uh, should be out hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah.